to another Slightly Redneck video. Uh, just going to do a quick rabbit update today. Haven't done one in a while. I uh, want to talk about a change in my breeding plans and then also uh, how to deal with heat in the rabbitry. So that's coming up next. Just stay tuned. All right, first of all, let's talk about what I changed in my breeding plan. In my last uh, rabbitry update, I said I planned on breeding this doe right here two weeks after the last one gave birth. Well, I didn't go through with that because it was the beginning of June and, uh, man, it got unseasonably hot there. It got up to about 95 degrees the first week of June, about the time I would have been breeding her. And it's pretty much stayed there the whole time. And I don't like to breed uh, my rabbits whenever it's over 80 degrees. Um, I like to give them a little bit of a break from that. They, they kind of struggle in the heat anyway, which brings me to the main topic of my video. Let's talk about how I deal, deal with the uh, heat in my rabbitry. You see a lot of people talk about putting them in sheds with air conditioners, uh, running fans over them, uh, misting systems, uh, frozen water bottles, and all of those things work. And by all means, if you can do that, do that. Um, I will mention that the, uh, the misting systems don't really work well here. This is southwest Missouri, so not only are we blessed with 95 degree temperatures and 98 degrees heat indexes of 107 in the middle of July, but we're also blessed with high humidity. So the high humidity does not work well with a misting system. They work by evaporation, and if there's a lot of moisture in the air already, it's not evaporating anymore. So not a good choice for my area. I have frozen water bottles before, uh, two liter, or yeah, two liter soda bottles. I just filled them with water and stuck them in the freezer and froze them and put them in their cages. That seems to provide them with a little bit of relief, and I do that early in the season when the temperatures first start climbing over 80 degrees. I'll try to keep ice in their cage for a couple hours a day. But after that, I just let them acclimate to the heat, and I, by and large, I do nothing. And that's a little bit more involved than what it sounds like. And what I mean by that is that any chores that I do, my feeding, uh, watering, checking the rabbits, any time I have to handle them, I try to do that early, early morning. First thing in the morning before the heat of the day is hit. They're more active at that point. They're not nearly as uh, you know, lethargic from the heat. And uh, it just doesn't stress them out. So I try during the middle of the day from about 11 o'clock on to about 7 or 8 o'clock at night. I try not to mess with my rabbits at all. Just leave them alone, let them rest. They'll rest all day long. And then whenever the uh, sun goes down at night, they get up and they're pretty active in the evening and the nighttime. So make sure they have cool water all the time. Uh, the automatic watering system I put in, if you've seen my video on that, it's working great. It's keeping them watered. And uh, I've got it way back behind the shed so it's out of the sun, so it stays pretty cool. Okay, maybe you can notice this or not, but this is uh, tucked up right against the north side of my house, which means uh, that it's in constant shade all day. The whole rabbit barn is in constant shade. The sun never hits it directly. Um, and that helps quite a bit with keeping them a little bit cooler too. The biggest thing I want to show here is that it's, uh, you know, it's already 100 degrees out. Well, it's 95 with a heat, heat index of about 104. And you can see they're doing okay. Um, you know, for the most part, they're just kind of hanging out and chilling. And, uh, you know, you can see them breathing a little bit heavy from time to time, stretched out on the wire but they're not in stress. Um, I watch my rabbits pretty close, and if I do have a rabbit that stresses out from the heat, I will treat it with, uh, with ice bottles in the cage, um, but then I'll call it from the herd. And by call, I don't mean kill and eat necessarily. Uh, that could easily mean sell it, give it away to somebody as a pet. Uh, this mother rabbit, for example, I'm not, going to, uh, I'm not going to eat her. She's been a good rabbit. She's been friendly. The only disappointment I have is that these babies are not growing out anywhere near as fast as they want, so I am going to be removing her from the herd. Um, but I don't want those genetics passed on, just like I don't want heat stress genetics passed on. So I remove those rabbits if they have problems. Let's take a look at my buck real quick and see how he You can see he doesn't even look bothered by it at all. Now, late afternoon, he'll be stretched out on his wire cage as well, and he'll be breathing a little bit hard, and his ears will be up. But what you're watching for is watch their nose. If their nose seems excessively wet or their chin seems excessively wet, then you've got a rabbit that's suffering from heat stroke. And you need to do something about it. All right, well, that was me just rambling on a little bit about it, but that's pretty much all I got for this update. So, you know, hit me up with some questions, let me know, and uh, I'll do another video update, and I'll make sure I get those questions answered for you. So thanks for watching, and uh, as always, God bless.